Sovereign God, we give you thanks for this beautiful Lord's Day and the opportunity to enjoy it together as family and friends here at Darlington Raceway. Father, we ask for your watch care and protection over the drivers as they compete tonight. And we ask, Father, that you keep their team safe as well. Please remind us that you are the giver of all good gifts. And Father, may we live for your glory tonight, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. And here to perform our national anthem, please welcome pop music icons, Hanson. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light? Well, the pageantry is just not with the race cars. How about on the pace laps? We mentioned our pal Jeff Burton will be down there. There are seven decades of NASCAR, seven different Camaros leading the field, and they are being driven by the who's who, right? You have Rick Hendrick, Richard Childress, two owners, Jeff Burton, Ray Everham, Ricky Craven, Horner Day, Ward Burton. I mean, that's like the all-star list of Darlington. They're going to be pacing the field. Yeah, Ward Burton, a two-time winner here, and his brother Jeff. I mean, that's got to feel great for those two guys to be there. Jeff also a two-time winner here, and uh, we miss him right now, and he'll be up here soon enough. Rick Hendrick, he's driving in a Camaro that's actually going to be auctioned uh, Barrett Jackson in January for the Nationwide Children's Hospital, so that's going to be pretty exciting. I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing what that car can bring. Richard Childress, six-time Cup Series championship owner, eight Darlington wins as an owner. Ray Evernham, three-time championship crew chief with Jeff Gordon. Now the 90s saw the birth of grunge rock. Plaid was popular way before Rutledge started wearing it. The kids lined up to get a game board, while a show about nothing turned out to be something indeed. The box office turned out Titanic hits like Pulp Fiction, Forrest Gump, and Jurassic Park. But I have seen Shawshank Redemption oh, about 30 times. And in sports, the Chicago Bulls scored six NBA titles. And Jeff Gordon tamed Darling over and over again. But when you attack it, there's a price to be paid. It's the hardest race I have around. Not ready to come into tears. Just as happy winning this than we was the first. A million dollars. Come on, buddy. What'd you expect me to do, man? My favorite paint scheme is what Ryan Blaney has. Because it's an ode to the Buckeye Bullet, also known as his dad, Dave Blaney. There's that 77 Jasper Engines Ford you saw back in 02 and 03. And the coolest thing about him running this scheme here at Darlington is that his dad got one of his best finishes here at Darlington at 03 race, third. I thought that was pretty cool. Maybe he can back that up here tonight. He'll be starting 21st, so he's got a lot of work to do, Kelly. Well, certainly one of the most recognizable and most popular rides out here this weekend is driven by William Byron in the 24. Of course, this is the paint scheme made famous by Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon, the Rainbow Warrior paint scheme that helped Jeff earn three of his cup titles, 52 of his wins. William Byron, by the way, on the outside of the playoffs will need to channel his inner Jeff Gordon here tonight. Gordon, a seven-time winner here at Darlington. William Byron needs that win tonight to get into the playoffs. Marty? Gordon takes his fifth checkered flag in the Southern 500. Even this right here, the field being led by seven generations of the Camaro. That's right, man. We got seven generations of the Camaro, and plus you got seven legends from the series there's our buddy jeff burton man he's making a pass who's he passing right there oh look at rc yeah oh. a lot of fun out there enjoying themselves so much fun for these guys to be able to come out here you see so many legends come out for this race that don't normally go to the races this is an event that they come to see people in the garage you've never seen before well you mentioned I mean, a who's who list of people that are driving these cars. Rick Hendrick, Richard Childress, two owners, Hall of Fame owners. Jeff Burton, dominant in his racing career, will join us here in a little bit. Ray Everham, my mentor, also a Hall of Famer. We have Ricky Craven, Ron Hordaday, Ward Burton, Jeff's brother. Man, we chased Ward Burton around here a time or two. He knows how to run around the Southern 500. So those guys are pacing the field. But let's go back into the field, talk to one of the drivers that's taking part today. Let's see if we can dial up Joey Logano. So I think Pat hooked me up a little bit and got this uh, 
The third and final stage, a little bit longer, Junior. We got to run 167 laps. The fuel window, just over 70 laps, and then we're gonna say this all night long: the Darlington Stripe. If you get a little too high, and I think everybody will, you make contact with the wall. Look at that! I think that's you at the top <laughs> left. Mine up there, buddy. Oh. I got a few here. <laughs> I like that. that's a good look. Wipe the right side number off. I was always told. So I was so fortunate to work with Jeff Gordon and Ray Everham, and Jeff was so dominant back here in the 90s. And one year, he came back, he won the race, and didn't have damage on the right side. He was so proud. He told Ray, and Ray goes, I don't think you were trying hard enough. You didn't hit the wall one time, so I had to love it. So let's go down to pit road for a few more updates. We'll start with Parker Clicker. Keep your eyes on the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He has to start this race from the rear of the field for unapproved adjustments after fixing some damage sustained during qualifying. Good news for Jimmy. Two of his last three wins have come starting from the rear, Marty. I, I blinked, and I went back to about 1998. It's the bright yellow 24 in the throwback scheme going by the 18 in the Skittle scheme. Felt like I was back at a Southern 500, although Kyle Busch still under attack by his teammate, the 20. Yeah, that's impressive seeing William take that position. He's hounding the bumper of Ryan Newman down here in turn one and two. Running just a little bit lower. You talk about the different lines. You got to get out from behind that guy to get some air on the front of the car. He's really putting the pressure on here. Well, I instantly asked myself, though, is the young man pushing too hard? Is the wily veteran Ryan Newman? He said it's his favorite racetrack. Is he conserving a little tire here? Saying, you know what, young man? I've seen this before. <laughs> you go ahead. I'm going to see you in a few more laps when your tires wear out. There, he's got position. He's going to be able to make the pass. I think Ryan will back off here down into turn one, and he does that. William Byron moving to the front here. This exit of turn two right here. Take me through it, though. It's so difficult. Double wide. Yeah, he's running just a little bit lower. Look at him. He's almost all the apron on corner exit. Car in front of him running a little bit higher. He's trying to keep that clean air on the front of his car. Run whether or not. We there. mentioned throwback paint schemes. This one changed overnight. It showed up solid blue, that original look. Now they got the day glow red on it. Bubba Wallace started it a little bit farther back than he wanted. Working on, I think that's the 32 of Matt DiBenedetto in the Jeff Burton throwback. <laughs> yeah. He was all on there. Let's see what he does. He's not even close to the wall. We see a lot of guys run this particular line, which is unique. Towards the front, we got Logano who went by Bowman. Now, William Byron in that 24 car trying to pass his teammate Alex Bowman in the 88. I believe Bowman will let him go here into turn one. Well, this throwback scene from Kyle Larson, he is just flying, but it's a throwback to Davey Allison in the 1987 to 90 Texaco Avalon car. And it's cool to see that car up front. You know, Davey. Had such a bright future in this sport, and unfortunately, we lost him early. And it's great to see somebody represent Davy Allison tonight. Right in front of the leader here, you see Austin Dillon. He's caught. Boy, he's caught uh, Byron. And those two guys now are battling for position to try to be. And they've the caught. Leader. And they've caught slower traffic. So they're going to. There's going to be a battle through this slow traffic while Kyle Larson is coming with three to go. And who's behind Kyle Larson is Christopher Busher, and he's hoping that he don't pass any of these guys so that Christopher Busher can get the lucky dog when this all when this stage is over with. Oh, big slide out of Byron. 24. Yeah, Byron's going to go down a lap easily. That's just how good Larson's car is, man. He's not having any trouble. What's he going to do here? He's blowing Around dust off the left rear tire. And right now, the biggest fan, William Byron's, he loves Austin Dillon right now. He needs Austin Dillon to stay in front of Kyle Larson. It's going to be hard to do. Austin's been running hard. He's going to see what he does down here in one and three and four. Will he drive to the bottom and give Kyle the top? This lap car of Stenhouse, that's going to be the key. Who can get around him? That's going to cost him the lap. Larson's going to get that momentum around the top here, and he's going to put a lap on Austin Dillon. Oh! Austin not giving it to him. Oh, Larson is not going to like that. Damage on the left front fender of the leader, the 42 of Kyle Larson. He does have some pretty decent damage right there. Luckily, we're coming to the stage end. He'll be able to adjust that, get that tuned up. But that definitely sends Austin Dillon a good ways ahead. So now he got his good clearance. Coming to the last couple of corners before this stage is over. This will be Kyle Larson's first stage win if he can get through three and four. Second, second, second. stage win, yep. Look at him down low. You mentioned it, only the second one. He lost the playoff point. That's why we thought it was his first. He lost the first one, but this will be his second. He'll take the playoff point, but he's got to be fuming with the yes. three of Austin Dillon racing so hard. Now Austin Dillon staying on the lead lap, but damage to the 42 after being so dominant in stage one. 
we're gonna have to see him repair that car. Well, Larson's mad, but William Byron's happy because that put William Byron the first car lap down, so he should get the free pass. So, you know, hey, stage ends, man. It's a stage. It's a stage in. Every point matters. You can't go laps down, and we just saw the aggression level pick up. Larson, something up real quick here. I said that earlier that. Busher was going to be a lap down. He actually got the free pass, not William Byron. So Chris Busher in the lead lap as well. Well, he got it because William Byron, what a move. We saw yeah. Austin Dillon in the 42 beating back, and William Byron unlapped himself. Talk about beating back. Look at these guys, Junior. Yeah, Denny Hamlin had a hard time getting off of turn two. Lost a couple spots down the back straightaway. Denny Hamlin right there, currently in ninth. Chase Elliott in 10th, right behind him in that bright yellow number nine. And that's not Jeff Gordon behind him. That's William Byron in that rainbow paint scheme, the 24, currently in the 11th position. Think about that. Unlaps himself, coming to the green and white checkered, now running in 11th. Yeah, if he doesn't do that, and he takes the lucky dog, he's behind his whole field of cars. Now he's up there competing for position. That's a great feeling. And how about being a young man coming to your first Southern 500 and driving a Jeff Gordon throwback scheme? That's that's got to be quite a feeling. Pressure. That's pressure, man. But that's an opportunity. Pressure is an opportunity, and he's up for the challenge we saw at the start of the race. He was really fast. They did fall off along on the long run, and he did almost lose a lap, but they can adjust for that long run. He's got the early run speed in the car. And yeah, we talked about William Byron and that Jeff Gordon throwback scheme, and there it is. The Rainbow Warrior paint scheme. You that had scheme, to do with that, that scheme made my career. That was the big break. I got a chance to work with Ray Everham as his tire guy for Jeff Gordon back in the mid 90s, eventually becoming Jeff's crew chief. I owe my career to Jeff and perhaps that paint scheme. That's a recognizable paint scheme. That ruined mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we mentioned William Byron in that move coming to the checker. We talked, we showed you the replay of the three and those guys getting together. But look at Ricky Stenhouse and William Byron. Look how close that is. Race back to the line. There's no yellow. That unlapped him. That could change the entire course of his race, Kelly. Hey, talk about that cool Rainbow Warrior paint scheme on the 24. Well, William Byron's driver suit is equally as cool. And his crew chief, Darian Grubb, told me he was so excited about it. When he first got the fire suit, he put it on an hour early. Just couldn't wait to get into that iconic Rainbow paint scheme. Uh, William Byron, who, of course, ran here in the Xfinity Series, was the highest finishing Xfinity Series driver here last year, uh, only finishing to a handful of cup drivers. So they had a lot of confidence coming here, Marty. Kelly, a little battle up front between uh, Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin there as Chase Elliott gets that position. And William Byron better make sure that that guy on the left, Kyle Larson, is on the Christmas card list because Kyle clearly lifted out of the gas, let a couple guys by him so they could stay on the lead lap. His team asked him, hey, why'd you do that? He said, I was just trying to be a nice guy. Burton, if you only had more nice guys letting you back on the lead lap at Darlington, your life probably would have been a lot better. Well, that's something we used to see a long time ago. And actually, Dale Jarrett and I were talking about the other, the other day, and I'm like, why do we used to let people back in the lead lap when we come into a caution? And we didn't really know why we did that. But that's something we don't see today is giving people a break and getting them back in the lead lap. And somebody we need to point out right here, Jamie McMurray is running in 16th. That doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but he's the first car lap down. But this is how his weekend started, one oh. lap of practice. And when he blew, when I say he blew up, <laughs> he blew up. I mean, this thing, look at all the oil and the, just the debris on the racetrack. They got very limited practice. And even in, even to the point in qualifying, they just practiced. They went on the racetrack and just made practice laps. So to be the first car lap down, I think that's a good achievement, Parker. Moving around. Truex dealing with lap traffic right here, the 51 car. The cloud gets out of these guys' way. Yeah, the 24 of William Byron also trying to stretch this to the stage end for the rookie. He is in a must-win situation now with just two races to go ahead of the playoffs. His crew chief, Darian Grubb, known for some aggressive calls. He said William Byron is excellent at tire management. He learned a hard lesson at, at Atlanta earlier this year when his first stint realized just how much these tires can get eaten up in the Cup Series. So William Byron still 25 laps to go to the stage end. Next Sunday on NBCSN, the Monster Energy Cup Series hits the brickyard for the regular season finale. Race coverage from Indianapolis Motor Speedway begins at 2 p.m. Eastern. Somebody's going to kiss the bricks next week. I know who started that tradition. Yeah. Who uh, started it? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What Todd, made you think of that? Yeah. Todd Parrott and I were sitting around a night. We would. We were probably a little too full of ourselves in 1996, <laughs> having some success and things. And uh, I battled my teammate here, Ernie Irvin, and uh, he slid up a little bit in turn one, and we were able to take the checkered flag and join victory lane. And then Todd reminded me, he said, we're going to do something different. We'd sat around and talk about what was different. And and uh, so that's what we came up with. And God, it's, it's really cool to see everybody take on that now from, you know, the yeah, IndyCar guys, everything. Is. That's what I think has got to feel the best is that you're, you've started something that everyone now dreams yes. of doing. Stage two now complete here at Darlington. I can tell you that the entire Hendrick organization is racing with the Hendrick family in their hearts here tonight. Rick Hendrick's niece, Alicia Hendrick Ganey, passed away at the age of 38 last week following some heart complications. A memorial service was held for her a couple days ago and all four Hendrick cars now have this special decal to honor her memory but certainly a family who has dealt with so much tragedy facing yet another loss tonight, and our thoughts are with the Hendrick family as well. Yeah, it's such a sad story. Kelly mentioned it. It was uh, Rick's niece, and actually, Rick drove that pace car at the beginning of the Camaro, day. You, yeah. That Camaro. Camaro. You talked about it. Hendrick. That Camaro is going to be auctioned off at Barry Jackson later in January for the Nationwide Children's Hospital. Yeah, they built that thing ground up at Hendrick Performance, a 1969 Camaro. It's going to be interesting to see what it brings for a great cause. Absolutely. Yeah. How about the rally for Clint Boyer? Remember the loose wheel? is a right rear wheel that was loose at lap 146. He has since rallied back into the top 10. Very impressive. And throwing back to Ned Jarrett, who once won this race by 14 laps. Boyer, he loves this racetrack, but he only has one career top 10 here ever. That was 11 years ago, trying to get another one tonight. Well, the last time William Byron's crew chief, Darian Grubb, went to victory lane was right here at the Southern 500. It was with Carl Edwards back in 2015. They came back from two laps down. Darian told me he knows it's a long, hot race. you got to be patient. Right now, William running 12th, but we still got 135 laps to go, Marty. NASCAR and NBC is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the credit card perfect for everyday purchases. Toyota, let's go places. Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of NASCAR. And by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. That is the Darlington Museum down here. That thing is awesome. So much history at this racetrack. So much history inside that museum. Two million dollar cars. Jeff Gordon and Bill Elliott. Game here, guys. Do you go three stops in this final stage, or do you go two stops? See Clint Boyer, who we mentioned a moment ago, has rallied his way back into the top ten. Car's been too tight for Boyer on this run. Several other teams saying, hey, we're going to go with two stops, including the leader, Kyle Larson. They're going to make it on two stops in this final stage, Dave. And when you take a quick run down pit road, you can also take a look at the 14 crew down here, of course, running that Ned Jarrett paint scheme. These guys look great, and you can't leave out the Wood Brothers, the 21 team. Sure is, Parker. Ty Dillon takes us back to 19, uh, 2009 and Jermaine Racing's first foray into the Cup Series. The driver, Como Italy's Max Pappas. He raced 15 times and got the team's first top 10 in the series, eighth at Watkins Glen. Marty? Clint Boyer staring at his best ever Southern 500 finish. He is in six, and maybe he's channeling a little bit of Ned Jarrett. This is Ned Jarrett's paint scheme from 1965, and check out the cool lettering with the Carolina Ford dealers on there. Ned, by the way, won that race by 14 laps. Clint Boyer's number 14 there. The biggest margin in Cup Series history. You see him coming to pit road right now, Kelly. He goes, that's been the same all race, just a little bit free. So that is a little bit free for Kyle Larson. That's a lot free to me, Dave. Marty, as a crew chief to run at Darlington, you have to really be flexible. Chris Gale last year got Eric Jones a top five by employing the more stops strategy in the final run. Earlier tonight, he deployed the more stops strategy to get him up to where he was. But tonight, for the final run, he's going the less stops strategy. Flexibility, Kelly. William Byron in the 24 cars. 
had a car that's been a little bit too loose on late. They've taken some pretty big swings at it on pit road. Last time down, they just made an air pressure adjustment, which seemed to help him out. He said his balance was really not that bad this last run. So it's going to be four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel for William Byron. William Byron's in a nice job. You talk about how difficult this racetrack is. Look at the right side of that race car. Relatively clean. I don't see any damage from the wall. 60 laps to go. That's a good run by the driver of the 24. I think Jeff Gordon, if he's watching, he's going to be impressed to see that paint scheme running well here this weekend. And now it's gets to the wait and see game. Kyle Larson leading the race. I would expect we're going to see him. You saw the 51 was up high. He thought, man, I'm going to go below the 51, I'm sure, and try to make a move on the 31. And the 31 just continued to decel. Let's see if uh, Newman was waving down the back straightaway. There he is, yeah. Not a lot. I mean, New you know, Clint, these guys can't see it. There's a car between Clinton and Newman. I think that was a major factor. I think that that car, I think that was a major factor with B.J. McLeod. I believe that's who it was. You know, Clint's behind him, and then all of a sudden, so, so watch, so watch. and wait watch now. BJ, he points him to the bottom. So you look at 31 wave, and now look at BJ McLeod. His hand comes out the window and points to the bottom. He's going to let Clint Boyer go on the bottom. But Clint, guys, I mean, yeah. if I'm a crew chief, I'm putting four tires on, no doubt. You mentioned Kurt Busch, those laps he was putting together at Dale Jr. It really worked out for him. He should get the free pass in this situation. Add him back to the cars in the lead lap. Kelly showing you there William Byron in the 24 that's because he says he is blowing up and now you can see that puff of smoke coming out William saying that the oil pressure is on two and he just said it's too hot and he has no oil pressure two is not enough oil pressure no two and, is and that's the second Hendrick car with an oil pressure problem and the third of the weekend if you go back to Jamie McMurray that's right. so that's yeah. three Hendrick engines normally very reliable I didn't even think about Jamie's car HMS power we talked about the games you know, where do you make gains? Downforce, you know, horsepower? Oh, I mean, just, there it is. Oh, man. It's done. They've made gains everywhere, and uh, apparently some of the gains under the hood are. Well, nothing's free, right? I mean, yeah. you, you can't have, hey, what do you want, more more horsepower or more reliability? Oh, I'll take both. Well, that's not really how it works. <laughs> uh, working with these guys, though, they're the best at going home and figuring out how to fix this stuff, you know, stuff and, and maintain that gain. Kelly. All right, you're going to see who takes this opportunity to pit once again. The two of Brad Keselowski, pretty happy. It was just a short run on those tires. With Clint Boyer now, Clint, that was a big hit. You all right? Yeah, it was a, it's a shot. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it must have been pitting. I mean, he just stopped right in the middle of the racetrack. I don't know. You, you come up on, first of all, the damn lappers out there. I don't know who the 99 car is or whatever, but... I think I lapped him 50 sometimes. He's all over the damn place. You come by him, you come by this guy. You don't even have a chance to get track of where you're at because of, of who you're racing and some of the guys that are in the race. Um, everybody deserves a chance out there, but I'm, I'm tired of that crap. Frustrated. I uh, was really proud of this car with, with Ned Jarrett here today. It was a pretty special day. I don't know what it is about this place. I run decent here. I never can't finish. It's always something stupid. Um, it's always something stupid like that, but I don't know. We uh, <laughs> guess I'll go home, pout some more. To go, and now they don't have the lead anymore. Legato. Too hard. Legato making a run on him being in the three. I gotta be. Now it looks like it could be Brad Keselowski. Could he get his first win of 2018? Carry that momentum into the playoffs. Never won at Darlington until yesterday. Won the Xfinity race. Could he get his first Southern 500 win tonight? 24 career wins. Looking for career win 25. A cup champion. But so far, the trophy case is empty when it comes to a crown jewel race. Brad Kozlowski, with help of his pit crew, wins the race off pit road and will win the 69th Southern 500. They do it. They deliver a race-winning pit stop. And then Brad Keselowski, you see two teammates right here. That pit crew, they're just like special teams in other sport in football where you they still sit on that sideline and at that big moment they gotta step up. And this is Brad Keselowski's signature move, American flag in the left side door. The third time in Brad Keselowski's career, he has swept the weekend. His 
Pit crew stepped up at the right time and made it happen. He knows how to get to Victor Lane. Look at him, don't want to burn <laughs> out in front of his buddy. Yep. Blaney. He pulls into Victor Lane for the second time in two days. Yeah, I was going to say, he better know how to get there. He's just there 24 hours ago, bud. <laughs> but this, in my mind, you guys know how much work goes into these wins. This was always the most special. Yeah, and never won a Southern 500, but now you get to see your car here in Victory White Lane. What is that like? It means a lot to me. It really does. The last time we won with this paint scheme, we won a Coke 600 and the Sears Point race out in California with this paint scheme. And this was Miller Brewing Company's return to NASCAR. So when I saw that he was going to run this scheme, I got really excited. And obviously, I felt like I was watching my own kid tonight. I'm up there at MRN calling the race, and I'm looking at this thing going, holy smokes. And then we lost the paint scheme deal to Jeff Gordon's car. But when we won the race, I get to say we won the race. So that, that was really cool. And I'm, and I'm saying we because I'm pretty emotional to this paint scheme. I really like this. This is big time to me, and I'm happy for the team. you the creator and sustainer of life we have assembled here lord at this well rick william byron this 24 car and this 24 team know they're in a must win position if they want to make the playoffs but they've got two good things going for them one williams won your next finish series two this team is essentially the entire team that casey kane won the brickyard 400 with last year kelly well jimmy well, rain may have pushed back the start of this race 24 hours, but nothing can push down when you come to Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the history of this place. Well, it's simple, Rick. As a young boy growing up in this country watching auto racing, my heroes were created at this racetrack, whether it was Unser or Foyt in open wheel and transition to Gordon and Earnhardt at the Brickyard. This racetrack creates racing legends. This is the last race of the regular season, so think about two drivers that are currently in the playoffs, but just barely. It's William, excuse me, Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowman just on the inside. While they look good on points, a surprise winner would absolutely devastate their playoff hopes. Would that be, say, Jamie McMurray? He has won the Brickyard before. Or Ryan Newman, another Brickyard 400 winner. But I think perhaps the sentimental favorite, the driver of the 24. Think Jeff Gordon took the 24 to victory lane five times in this race, a record that currently stands today. Could William Byron become the youngest ever Brickyard 400 winner and get a race win in his rookie season? The only five-time winner of the Brickyard 400. Side by side, Kurt Busch on the inside of William Byron. William Byron's going to have to give him the position down into turn three. If that's the smartest thing to do, Junior, just give that spot up. If not, Chase Elliott will get a run. Chase Elliott got a run anyway. Drives underneath him, getting into turn four. William Byron smart and gets to the bottom to try to block. Kyle Busch, like he shot out of a cannon, will go back to the lead. Kevin Harvick goes back to second. Challenge for third. William Byron, look at him go. He'll dial up the inside of the racetrack. He'll go to third, and Menard's hands are full on the back straightaway. Well, you mentioned Paul Menard. How about the 20-year-old William Byron driving that famed 24? Five times that car number has won the Brickyard 400. Could he make it six for the car number, get his first career win? Rick, you see the two leaders pulling away. Well, the third-place car is the one that caught my attention. That 24, who's under attack right now by Matt Kenseth, looks to have a little damage on the right rear quarter panel behind the right rear tire. That's definitely got a very sensitive area. Will hurt the 24 as Matt Kenseth continues to attack. Battle for third. Kenseth opens up the inside. They're trying to get their car fixed. A lot of damage on that car, Marty. And they tried to get it fixed, Jeff, but you can see the tire rub. They've told them to bring it back to pit road. They have no time left on the damage vehicle policy for NASCAR. They're currently at 5.05, meaning they only have 55 seconds left. If you can clear minimum speed, they clear that clock, but they're never going to make it, guys. Yeah, he'd have to complete a lap, and it looks like with the tire rubbing there that would be very dangerous for the driver to stay out in that condition and the worst part for that is that puts his playoff hopes in the hands of other competitors someone like William Byron right here who's fighting off Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson could go to victory lane and we see a winner outside the top 16 that would eliminate Alex Bowman from the playoffs in the final week of the regular season Chase Elliott with an up and down day so far finds himself in the top 10 but he is some seven seconds behind the race leader. Elliott comes to turn two following his teammate. That's the car right in front of him. That's William Byron. As both those drivers now off two. Now they're joined by Jamie McMurray in the one car. 
Yeah, Wade Byron dropped a seventh since this restart, trying to stop the bleeding here is Chase Elliott, trying to put the pressure on, trying to be able to get up there and disrupt the air around that 24 car so he can get a run and make a pass. But a good day for William Byron. William Byron, a rookie, you know, young driver, came into the Xfinity Series. Here, caution, caution right now on the racetrack. Yeah, we got a car spun off a of turn two. 23 car. J.J. Yaley. Looks like he's got a flat tire of some, some kind here. of an issue Jackie there. Four tires. He's spun around. See the car buckling. Would you say that is a Burt Reynolds throwback paint scheme on there for the 23? Paying respect to the late Burt Reynolds. That fence as well in that altercation. Yaley, a very established dirt racer, was also a part of BC 39. Took place on Thursday night. See on the right half of the screen, that 24 of William Byron on pit road, Parker. And he leads the field here of guys who decide to pit. They were last on pit road, lap 32. His crew chief, Darian Grubb, came across radio and said that once they do this stop, they only have one more stop to finish the race. Just struggling with being a little bit tight off the corner, Dave. Brad Keselowski. And again, penalties on pit road. Take another look at what happened here with the 24 team. Well, this is for the 24 of William Byron. They're going to call it an uncontrolled tire. And all I can figure is that that right front tire that was pushed by the tire changer then left. The rule is it has to be within arm's reach. It's very close to the carrier. It is truly a judgment call. But I'm going to tell you, Rick, if I'm a crew chief, I'm going to spend some time in the trailer before the race at Las Vegas. I have to understand this rule black and white before we enter the playoffs. That's the fifth call in just this race today. So we're going to have, as we've continued to say all day, just a jumbled up grid. We see we have William Byron currently as the leader. He was last on pit road at lap 77. He has 22 laps on his tires. Well, I think Darren Grubb's theory here is I can only pit, I can pit one more time and I can make it. It is not like another race. I, I, I used to no. say this. I was very fortunate to be on teams. I never was able to win it as a crew chief, but I was on Jeff Gordon's teams. who won it multiple times. And everyone has said, oh, well, you know, it's just another race. I said, that's because you haven't won it. And I've been fortunate enough, worked with really great drivers, great teams. And I, that moment, that 36 inches of brick, probably the most valuable real estate in all of auto racing on the front stretch. When you kneel there and look up and down the start finish line, up and down the front stretch, it starts to sink in the, the, the people who have done this before you. It's truly amazing. Who knew just a simple yard of bricks could be so valuable. The racetrack built back in 1909. And as I mentioned before, all the greats have been here and been able to capture wins. Steve, you noted how William Byron got to the lead here knowing that they've gotten back on their strategy where they can pit one more time. His team told him, get ready to use that blue reserve switch. You'll give us a lap and a half extra. They're definitely going to need it this run. Getting ready for the restart of the Big Machine Vodka 400 at the Brickyard. They're going to need all the fuel, and he's going to need a great restart. He has to keep that track position. William Byron, Clint Boyer, green flag. Clint Boyer on the outside has the advantage in one, but here comes William Byron in the 24, trying to fight back, but he'll be in second. Then the 11 of Denny Hamlin drops back to third. You see, he's got to run. He's going to get alongside and come down to the front straight away. And guys, William Byron just came on the radio and said he might have had a tire issue on the right front. He's down on pit road. Remember, he hadn't pinned in lap. 77 they were stretching the fuel as far as they could to get in the window to do this on one more stop it's before Goodyear tires Sunoco fuel for the rookie 